Welcome to tonight's preliminary round of High Q, the television competition that tests the general knowledge of top high school students across our area. Our teams tonight come to us from Bishop Miege High School and Shawnee Heights High School. First, let's meet the team from Bishop Miege. I'm Scott Schemmel, and I'm a senior. I'm Matt Greer, and I'm a senior. I'd like to introduce our coaches, Judy Bromberg and Craig Ewing, and our alternate, Justin Struby. I'm Mark Schreiner. I'm a senior. I'm Ryan McNaughton, and I'm a junior. And that's the team from Bishop Miege High School. Let's now meet the team from Shawnee Heights High School. I'm Russell Testa, and I'm a senior. I'm Dan Molden, and I'm a senior. Our coach is Lila Bartle, and our alternate is Greg Ayton. I'm Kyle Wetzel, I'm a senior. I'm CJ Atkins, I'm a senior. That's the team from Shawnee Heights High School. Our judge and referee is Dr. Robert Stein, chairman of the Washburn University Department of English and dean of Washburn's Honors Program. Our timekeeper is Karen Geyer, the Washburn coordinator for HiQ, and keeping score is Aileen Anderson, Washburn University's university relations person. We'll be back to play the first half of HiQ after this. are simple. I will ask a toss-up question. The individual who hits their buzzer first has the opportunity to answer the toss-up. Toss-up questions are worth 10 points apiece. If the toss-up is answered correctly, that team will then be given a bonus question. If an individual cannot answer the toss-up, the other team will be given the opportunity to answer. And if they are correct, they will be given the bonus question. A whistle will begin and end each round, and if we're in the middle of a question, when the whistle blows, I will complete that question sequence. During the final two minutes, we will ask toss-up questions only. We play two nine-minute halves, and the team with the most points at the end of the game advances to the quarterfinals. Teams, let's play the first half of High Q. Here is your first toss-up. What is the title of George Bernard Shaw's play about a Salvation Army officer whose father is England's largest munitions manufacturer? Time. The play is Major Barbara. Here is another toss-up. What college's sports teams are sometimes called the Black Knights of the Hudson? Time. That's Army or uh, West Point. Here is another toss-up, teams. What is the proper term for the loss of the sensation of pain? Mark, Bishop Miege. Neurasthenia. Not correct. Johnny Heights. Time. We're looking for analgesia. And since this is the 200th anniversary of the uh, Constitution in this country, we're going to try and ask a constitutional question in each one of our matches. Here is tonight's constitutional question. According to some conservative historians, the Louisiana Purchase was a key event in weakening the Tenth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. What does the Tenth Amendment provide for? Kyle, Shawnee Heights. States' rights. States' rights is correct, Shawnee Heights. Shawnee Heights, since you uh, did so well with that constitutional toss-up, we'll ask you a constitutional bonus. And here it is. The U.S. Constitution establishes three requirements for a person seeking the presidency. For ten points each, name these three requirements. At least 35 years of age. That is one. You have to have been born in the United States. That is correct. And you have to have lived in the United States for at least 14 years. That is correct for all 30 points. Here is another toss-up, teams. The extinct volcano Agridagi in eastern Turkey is better known by what name? Ryan, Bishop Miege, Mount Ararat. That is correct, Bishop Miege. Here is your toss-up. As you know, Asia is the smallest continent no, and the is the continent. largest continent, and Australia is the smallest. This bonus question is worth 25 points. Here's the way it works. For five points each, you rank the other five continents from largest to smallest, and if you get one of them out of order, your point count stops. Okay, uh, after Asia comes. Europe? That is not correct, no. Uh, Europe is actually the next to the smallest. It's Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Antarctica, and Europe. Here is another toss-up, teams. Eight of the ten largest banks in the world are located in what nation? Mark, Bishop Miege. The United States. Not correct. Shawnee Heights. Kyle. Japan. Japan is correct, Shawnee Heights. 
Here is your bonus question, Shawnee Heights, for 10 points each. Identify the states that are the settings for these novels. The first novel is Giant by Edna Ferber. Texas. Set in Texas, that is correct. The next is Canary Row, novel by John Steinbeck. Alabama. No, it's set in California. Uh, the third novel, My Antonia by Wella Cather, set in what state? New York. No, it's in Nebraska. Ten points on that bonus. Here is another toss-up, teams. Name the 1967 Beatles album, which broke new ground in the use... Matt, Bishop Miege. Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. That is correct, Bishop Miege. Bishop Miege, here is your bonus. I'll give you ten points each in this game. If you can tell me how many points you would get for these things in other games. First of all, how many points would you get for a three no-trup contract bid and made in the game of bridge? Twenty. Hundred. One hundred. Here's the second part of your bonus. How many points would you get for a long straight in Yahtzee? 60. 35. Close, 40. Here's your third part of your bonus. For how many points do you get for taking the queen of spades in the game of hearts? 10. 10. 10. Oh, I heard someone say it in the background, it's 13, 13. Here's your next toss up team. Richard Nixon was the last president to have two vice presidents because of Spiro Agnew's resignation. Who was the last president to change vice presidents between terms? Kyle, Shawnee Heights, Franklin Lo Roosevelt. That is correct, Franklin Roosevelt. In fact, he did it two times. Uh, John Nance Garner uh, changed to Henry Wallace, and then Harry, Harry Truman became the, uh, uh, the third one. Shawnee Heights, here is your bonus. A solid cube measures one meter on an edge and has a mass of 300 kilograms. For 25 points, what would be the mass of a solid cube of the same material that measured two meters on an edge? 2,400. 2,400, eight times as large. That is correct, Johnny Ike. Here is another toss-up, teams. Name the paleontologist who writes a popular column entitled This View of Life and whose essays have been published in such books as Ever Since Darwin and The Panda's Thumb. Kyle, Shawnee Heights. Stephen J. Gould. That is correct, Shawnee Heights. Stephen J. Gould. Shawnee Heights, here is your bonus question. For 15 points each, give me the names of the first men generally recognized as having reached the North and the South Pole. First, give me the name of the man generally believed to have reached the South Pole first. Burn. No, it is Raoul Amundsen, a Norwegian explorer. The second half of your bonus for another for 15 points, who is generally believed to have reached the North Pole first? Perry. Robert Perry, that is correct. Here is another toss-up team. One of the major accomplishments in the history of linguistics was the translation of a language called Linear B. Mark, Bishop Miesch. The Rosetta Stone. Uh, not correct. I'll complete the question for Shawnee Heights. It was a language called Linear B. On what Mediterranean island were the tablets written in Linear B found? Russell, Shawnee Heights. Malta. Not correct. They were found on the island of Crete. Here is another toss-up, teams. What modern-day nation was originally known as Upper Peru? Mark, Bishop Miege. Bolivia. Bolivia, that is correct. Uh, Peru's neighbor to the south. Bishop Miege, here's your bonus question. Many of the heroes of Greek mythology were believed to have been the sons of gods. For 10 points each, I want you to identify the divine fathers of these heroes. Who was the father of Theseus? Zeus. No, Poseidon. Poseidon. Who was the father of Hercules? Zeus. That is Zeus. And who is the father of Perseus? Apollo. That was also Zeus. One out of three. Here is another toss-up, teams. What was the name of F. Scott Fitzgerald's unfinished novel? C.J., Shawnee Heights. The Last Tycoon. That is correct, Shawnee Heights. Shawnee Heights, here is your bonus for 10 points each. Identify the state along whose coast you would find these bodies of water. The Albert Sound borders what state? 
That, that's Albemarle Sound. Albemarle, Albemarle Sound, excuse me. Borders what state? Maine. No, it borders North Carolina. Puget Sound borders what state? Washington. Washington is correct. And Hampton Roads borders what state? Louisiana. No, it's Virginia. Ten points on that bonus. Here's another toss-up, teams. The first soldier buried in Arlington Cemetery was not a member of the United States Armed Forces. What uniform did he wear? Mark, Bishop Miesch. Matt. Matt. Great Britain. And not correct. Shawnee Heights. Kyle. Is that France? No, uh, the uniform of the Confederacy. Here's another toss-up, teams. What was the original first name of the basketball star named... Mark, Bishop Miesch. Lou. Uh, no, that is not correct. I'll finish it for Shawnee Heights. The basketball star named World B. Free, his first name. Dan, Shawnee Heights. Thomas. No, it was Lloyd B. Free. He uh, plays for the Philadelphia 76ers under the name of World B. Free. That whistle we heard indicates that halftime has arrived in this preliminary round of high cube. And at halftime, Shawnee Heights is leading Bishop Miege 140 to 40. We'll be back to play the second half of High Q after this. We're ready to start the second half of tonight's preliminary round of High Q. At halftime, our score is Shawnee Heights 140, Bishop Miege 40 points. During halftime, Bishop Miege has a sub uh, substitution. Let's meet the new player. I'm Justin Struby. I'm a sophomore. Welcome, Justin. Let's play the second half of High Q. <clears throat> Teams, here is your first toss-up. What writer, born in Manhattan, Kansas, became known for his stories set in the other Manhattan? One of his stories was the basis for the musical Guys and Dolls. Matt, Bishop Miege. Damon Runyon. Damon Runyon is correct, Bishop Miege. <laughs> Bishop Miege, here is your bonus question. For ten points each, name the science fiction novels in which these characters first appeared. Paul Mob Dibb appeared in what science fiction novel? Dune. Dune is correct. Here's the second part of your bonus. Michael Valentine Smith appeared in what science fiction novel? A Stranger in a Strange Land. That is correct. And the character Lazarus Long appeared in what novel? Time Enough for Love. Time Enough for Love? No, it was Methuselah's Children. Two out of three, Bishop Miege. <laughs> Here is another toss-up. I'm looking for the word coined by T.H. Huxley, referring to one who pursues faith only as far as the evidence warrants, and who recognizes the limits of knowledge. From its Greek roots, this word literally means one who does not know. Kyle, Shawnee Heights. An agnostic. An agnostic is correct, Shawnee Heights. <laughs> Shawnee Heights, here is your bonus. For 10 points each, give me these dates in European history. Give me the year... The Spanish Armada was destroyed by England. 1588. 1588 is correct. The second part of your bonus. The year in which Joan of Arc was executed. 1342. 1431. The third part of your bonus. The year in which Martin Luther posted his 95 theses. 1587. 1517. Here is another toss-up, teams. Male hormones are called androgens. What are female? Matt, Bishop Miege. Estrogens. Estrogens. That is correct, Bishop Miege. Bishop Miege, here is your bonus. It has recently been disclosed that the ruler of a tiny oriental kingdom was persuaded by American officials to donate several million dollars to the Contra cause. For 10 points each, for a total of 30 points, I want you first to name the kingdom and then name the two U.S. officials involved. Matt, begin. Uh, the two men are North and Poindexter. Not correct. They were Schultz and uh, Abrahams. And the kingdom is... Uh... Time. Brunei. Brunei. Here is another toss-up, teams. What is the greatest common divisor of 85 and 34? Ryan? Seventh. Not correct. Shawnee Heights? Kyle, Shawnee Heights? Seventeen. Seventeen goes into 85 five times and into 34 twice. Shawnee Heights, here is your bonus for 10 points each. 
Name the singer or the group that released the following albums for 10 points each. First of all, who recorded the album Highway 61 Revisited? Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan's correct. Who recorded the album Syn uh, Synchronicity? The Police. Police is correct. Who recorded Thriller? Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, of course, for all 30 points. Here is your next toss-up, teams. Apart from uh, alternating vertical bands of white and red, what design appears on the Canadian flag? CJ, Shawnee Heights. A maple leaf. A maple leaf is correct, Shawnee Heights. Here is your bonus question. For 10 points each, name the states in which these universities are located. In what state is Tufts University located? Alabama. No, it's in Medford, Massachusetts, a suburb of Boston. In what state is Furman University located? New Jersey. Furman's in South Carolina. And in what state is Carnegie Mellon University located? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is correct for 10 points. Here's your next toss-up, teams. What are the two major political parties in England? Kyle, Shawnee Heights. The Conservatives and Labor. That is correct, Shawnee Heights. Shawnee Heights, here is your bonus. Rivers sometimes serve as natural boundaries separating states. What states are separated by these rivers for 10 points each? First of all, the two states separated by the Chattahoochee River. Tennessee and Kentucky. You're in the right neighborhood, but it's Alabama and Georgia. The two states separated by the Colorado River. Um, the uh, Colorado River separates California and Arizona. The two states uh, separated by the Snake River. Idaho and Montana? No, it's Idaho and Oregon. Here is another toss-up, teams. What American military man was credited with having won the Battle of Saratoga, but was subsequently passed over for promotion by his superiors? Ryan, Bishop Miege. Custer. Not correct. Shawnee Heights. Dan, Shawnee Heights. Burnside. Now we're looking for Benedict Arnold. Here is another toss-up, teams. December the 16th is an important date to the piano-playing Peanuts character. Matt, Bishop Miege. Beethoven's birthday. That's correct. Uh, Schro uh, Schroeder, of course, celebrates Beethoven's birthday. Bishop Miege, here is your bonus question. For 10 points each, in what countries were the following authors born? In what country was Joseph Conrad born? Poland. Poland is correct. In what country was George Sand born? India. India. France. In what country was Samuel Beckett born? Ireland. Ireland is correct. Two out of three, Bishop Miege. Here's your next toss-up, teams. Name the English writer of fantasies of the Arthur uh, Arthurian cycle, including the following uh, 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 writings, The Sword in the Stone, The Witch in the Wood, and The Ill-Made Knight. Ryan, Bishop Miesch. C.S. Lewis. Not correct. Shawnee Heights, looking for the author. C.J. Mary Stewart. No, we're looking for T.H. White. <clears throat> Here is another toss-up, teams. In 1939, after being prohibited from performing in Constitutional Hall, she was invited to sing at the White House. Matt, Bishop Miege. Marian Anderson. Marian Anderson at the White House. That is correct. Bishop Miege, here is your bonus question. In what year did Congress first prohibit the importation of slaves into the United States? All or nothing at all for 30 points. Eighteen fifty-seven. 1808, during the Jefferson administration. That whistle we heard during the asking of that question indicates that we have arrived at our two-minute warning. With two minutes remaining to play, Shawnee Heights is leading Bishop Miege, 230 to 120. We'll be back to play the final two minutes of High Q after this. minutes of tonight's preliminary round of high Q. With two minutes remaining, Shawnee Heights has the lead, 230 to Bishop Miege, 120. During the final two minutes, we ask toss-up questions only. Teams, let's play the final two minutes of high Q. Here's your first toss-up. The Latin alphabet, which we use, is the most widely used in the world. What is the second most 
Kyle, Shawnee Heights. The Cyrillic? Not correct. Bishop Mie is the second most widely used alphabet in the world. Mark? The Russian? No, the Arabic. Here is another toss-up. In 1986, the World Series had a pitching star who, because of an injury, missed his chance to face the team he had once helped win a World Series. Who is he? Time. Tom Seaver, a Boston pitcher, used to play for the Mets. Here is another toss-up. What two nations are separated by the Straits of Otranto? Otranto. Ryan, Bishop Miesch. Greece and Turkey. Not correct. Shawnee Heights. Time. The Straits of Otranto separate Italy and Albania. It's down by the boot heel of Italy. Another toss-up. What ruler of England was not a member of any royal family? Matt, Bishop Miesch. Oliver Cromwell. Oliver Cromwell, a Lord Protector. Another toss-up team. Science fiction author Isaac Asimov took his doctorate at Columbia University in 1947. In what discipline did he receive a degree? Kyle, Shawnee Heights. Physics. Not correct. Bishop Miesch. Mark? Chemistry. Chemistry is correct. Another toss-up. On a planetary orbit, the orbital point furthest away from the sun... Mark? The perihelion. Uh, no. Not correct. I'll complete the question. The furthest point away from the sun is called what, Johnny Height? Kyle? Aphelion. Aphelion. That is correct. The perihelion is the closest to the sun. Here is another toss-up. The Black Hills are in South Dakota. Name either of the two states in which you would find the Black Mountains. Ryan? Georgia. Not correct. Johnny Heights? Dan? Tennessee? No, not correct. Either Arizona or North Carolina. Another, that uh, whistle indicates we have ended this preliminary round of high Q. Shawnee Heights has won the preliminary round 240 to 140 by Bishop Mies. Shawnee Heights will now advance to the quarterfinals. Next week, we will play another preliminary round. It will see Seaman High School taking on Eureka High School. We'll see you next week on high Q.